Okay. So since that's your absolute minimum, this is just y equals negative 2 or negative 2. here this one's just a little trickier but same thing if you want to find the absolute maximum you just look for the highest point okay so for this one that's your highest point in the graph so your absolute maximum will be nine So any questions on that so far? So that part's not too bad. Now, some of this will seem like a review from Math 1000. And it's just creating a linear equation. Okay. Okay, so the first half of this may seem like a review, but I'll go over it anyway in case it's been a while and you may have forgotten a little bit. We'll start off with the slope, which is the slant or the steepness of a line. Now the formula to find the slope Slope is equal to the change in y over change in x. Or you may see some of it, some of it identified as the vertical change divided by the horizontal change. which is why if you go back far enough at some point, they told you that the slope was rise over run. Now you don't have to remember the rise over run because they have a nice simple little formula for it. So in general, the slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where we know that x2 does not equal x1, because then you'd have a denominator of 0. We all know that would destroy the planet. Or m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It's just your general formula that, outside of all that other stuff, is really all you have to remember. Okay. 
do a couple of quick examples. Oops. So, so you want to find the slope. Uh, let's say of the line through negative one five and two negative three. Okay. Now the first thing you want to do is pick your x one y one and your x two y two. y1 and x2, y2. Okay, so if we have our negative 1, 5, and our 2, negative 3, we can make this our x1, y1, or we can make this one our x1, y1. You'll get the exact same answer either way, so you don't have to worry about picking the wrong one. So x1 y1, x2, y2. Okay. Then the second thing you do is just plug it into your formula. Okay. So if we have our slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, then that's going to equal your y2 is negative 3, your y1 is 5, your x2 is 2, and your x1 is 1. Okay, so negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. 2 minus negative, the minus and negative cancel out so you get plus so 2 plus 1 is 3 so that would be your slope okay so this slope lets you know it's negative so it goes down and to the right Now, if it were positive, it would go up and to the right. Okay. Positive slopes. Go up and to the right. Any questions on that one, or hopefully it kind of looks familiar, kind of, sort of, somewhat? find the slope of the line through the points, say negative 1, negative 2, and 2, 4. Again, your first step, you just have to appoint one point as your x1, y1, and your other point as x2, y2. OK. 
Okay. So I can make that my X1 and this my Y1. Make this my X2 and that one my Y2. Second step is just plug it in. So if we know our slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, then that's going to equal, bring that up a little bit, y2 is 4, y1 is negative 2, so 4 minus negative 2. Your x2 is 2, your, your x1 is negative 1, so that's... 2 minus negative 1. Okay. So you end up with 4 minus negative 2, that becomes plus, which is 6. 2 plus negative 1, I mean 2 minus negative 1, that becomes plus, so you end up with 3. So you end up just with a slope of 2. So you know your slope is going to go up and to the right. So any questions on that one? Okay. Okay, so we kind of reviewed that a little bit. Let's say the, you could say if the linear equation. The the linear equation in the form y equals m times x plus b. And remember, m is your slope. and B is your y-intercept. Technically, your point, your y-intercept is zero B, but B is your y-intercept. Okay, so let's say, for example, if we wanted to find the slope for negative 2x plus 3y equals 11. Okay. Now we see here the slope is the value right next to your x, that coefficient. But the only thing is you have to make sure you solve for y first. So if you came and said the slope was 3, this one, I mean not 3, but negative 2, it would have been incorrect. You have to solve for y first, and then the value next to the x after you solve for y would be your slope. Yep. So first, solve for y. Okay, so if you have negative 2x plus 3y equals 11, just add 2x to both sides. Those two would just cancel each other out. So you end up with 3y equals positive 2x. So you can just put 2x plus 11. Then you just divide everything by 3. So you end up with 3y over 3 equals 2x over 3, or if you wanted to, you could bring the x to the front, plus 11 over 3. These two, anything divided by itself is just 1, so that disappears. 
So you end up with y equals 2 thirds x plus 11 over 3. Where in this case, your slope is equal to 2 divided by 3. So you have to remember to solve for y first when it's not in y-intercept form. I mean slope-intercept form. Oh, actually, I forgot to identify that as slope-intercept. Form. Okay, so whenever you solve for y, that's your slope-intercept form. Okay, and actually just... As a little added bonus, your y-intercept mm -mm. remember that's your b, so it's 0 and 11 over 3, since that's 0b, okay. which is why they call it slope-intercept. You have your slope and you have your y-intercept. Okay. Any questions on this one? Okay. And just a side note, the original problem we had here, negative 2x plus 3y equal 11, whenever all your variables are on the left-hand side, that's called standard form. So if they tell you stand, write it in standard form, they want it like this. If they want it in slope-intercept form, they, well, they want it like that. So this is your slope-intercept form. So standard form. all variables on the left. Okay. So in other words, if you have negative 2x plus 3y equals 11. Oops, sorry about that. In slope-intercept form, is when you solve for y. y equals 2 thirds x plus 11 over 3. 